Bradford Area Arts Council. Tonight, we honor our nominees and those whose shoulders we all stand on today. I absolutely love this job. Increasing access to the arts for everyone, and I couldn't do it without a mighty team, and I'd like these groups to stand, if you would. Our board of directors, the Arts Awards Committee members, Arts Council staff, we all welcome you here tonight. Tonight's experience wouldn't be possible without our partners in the arts. Thank you, UW Health, Montel Technologies, Rose Crates, Wells Fargo and Gumball Wealth Advisory Group, Hard Rock Rockford, Hinshaw and Culbertson, Holmstrom and Kennedy, DeBenedetto and Associates, the Dean Allen Olson Foundation, Peggy and Aaron Shields, City of Rockford Mayor McNamara, Winnebago County Chair, Shirley, Artali and Company, Dr. Kate Stewart, and Nancy Whitlock and her team here at the Rockford Women's Club. As an organization committed to increased accessibility, I want to thank Eric Brown and the team at RAMP who helped guide organizations like ours to make ourselves more inclusive in every way. As a result of RAMP's work in our community, we have the talented Bethel Breeden and Sonia Newton as our sign language interpreters tonight. Thank you both. The Arts Awards are an opportunity for the Arts Council to help the community connect the dots on how I believe our community is connected through the arts. Our 2024 partner this year, our performers and our testimonials will help you leave tonight's celebration knowing how our community is indeed connected through the arts. I recently heard a speech by someone at the Knight Foundation, an organization completely committed to arts and culture. The speaker summed up their passion for and commitment to arts and culture in nine words. Arts binds people together and to each other. Over the course of three years, the Knights Foundation and Gallup Polster spoke with 43,000 people in 26 communities across the country. Their question was simple. What attaches people to the place where they live? The study was called the soul of the community. And they found that contrary to conventional belief, it's not jobs or schools. And those are important aspects that play significant roles. The soul of the community study found that arts and culture offerings and aesthetics bind people to place, to place and to each other. This study is just another demonstration that art is not a luxury, but something worthy of a hefty line item budget. I have any budget. Art binds. Culture generates social capital and strengthens the community's character. Art brings people together physically at galleries, museums, and performance spaces and culturally through its capacity to tell a community's shared story. Art defines historical moments, grassroots movements, and the plight of ordinary people's extraordinary lives. The power of all the arts is their ability to wake us up to the realities that coexist within our own. Art defines, I already said that. <laughs> article, Karsten Moran, she speaks to the power of art, articulating that art is essential to our human spirit. She says art compels us to pay a certain kind of attention, increasing our emotional capacity. It creates empathy, longing, thrill, justice, and connection. Tonight, we celebrate and elevate our vibrant and talented creative sector, those who help create connection in our community. Creatives are small, medium, and large business owners, entrepreneurs, economic drivers, and community builders. On stage with me tonight to tell you more about our program is Lynn Williams. 
Lynn is an Arts Council board member, director of adult medical surgical inpatient services at UW Health, and local business owner. Lynn was a Kappa kid in RPS 205, and, is, and she has carried the love of theater with her all her life. Lynn is a person who has a lot to give, and the Arts Council is just a lucky recipient. Please welcome Lynn Lees. The Rockford Area Arts Awards are a celebration of creative individuals and organizations who have contributed to this enrichment of our community, all about our community. Tonight's awards includes a dynamic recap of our region sector, um, creative sector from 2023. Accomplishments, performances, testimonials, and innovations. As a board member, I can attest to the Arts Council's strong, diverse, and ever-growing partnership in the community. Tonight, our partners with Rockford Mass Transit District will share, yeah, will share its mission and how the RMTV connects our community through arts. Please welcome with me, RMTV Executive Director, Mike Stewie. Good evening. My name is Michael Sovey. I'm the Executive Director for the Rockford Mass Transit District, where I've had the pleasure for the past six years of serving the community. On behalf of the RMT, I'd like to thank the Arts Council for inviting us to participate in this great event, which highlights the amazing work of the terrific artists in our community. So what comes to mind when you think of the Arts Council? Obviously, it's the organization that supports, promotes, develops, access to the arts for everyone. So what comes to mind when you think of the RMTD? City buses, right? Maybe the cool periwinkle blue bus with the big R. Good answer. Or the environmentally friendly hybrid and battery electric powered buses that we have. All of those are fine answers. Well, we're proud of our rebrand and the progress we've made towards our goal of reducing carbon emissions and transitioning to a zero emission fleet by 2035. What we're most proud of is our work that our dedicated operations and maintenance employees perform daily, providing public transportation service to the residents of our community and helping to eliminate barriers to accessing opportunities. Access to jobs, education, training, housing, healthcare, grocery shopping, entertainment, recreation, and of course, the arts. By providing residents in our community with access to these opportunities, RMTD helps support economic development, attract and retain businesses, establish healthier neighborhoods, and build sustainable communities. By providing residents in our community with access to the arts, the Arts Council is impacting the community in many of the same ways as RMTD. Providing access to opportunities is how the arts and transit are connected. This is why the RMT recently partnered with the Arts Council to provide space on the exterior walls of our downtown transfer center to in install the Colossal Kids Mosaic. Local artist Susan Burton created the mosaic in collaboration with 25 local middle school and high school students as part of the Spark Summer Art Program. I'd like to again acknowledge and thank Susan and those 25 students for their amazing creation, the Colossal Kids which like so many other art installations throughout our community has positively impacted a public space by helping to create a sense of community and feelings of safety, well-being, and belonging for the public. RMTD looks forward to continuing to partner with the Arts Council as we identify more opportunities to help provide access to the arts through transit for everyone. So circling back on my earlier question, what comes to mind when you think of RMTD? I ask that you consider more than just the cool looking periwinkle blue buses with the big R or the hybrid or battery electric uh, powered vehicles we have. Moving forward, I ask that you consider the access to opportunities RMT provides our residents and the positive impact it has on eliminating barriers to connect our community, just like the arts. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike, and the RMTD team. Okay, before we begin tonight's awards um, section, we want everybody to know a few things, okay? First of all, get comfortable, all right? Get comfortable. It's, this atmosphere is like the theater, okay? You can get up, you can go to the bathroom. You can get a refill. I encourage you, get a refill. And uh, enjoy, enjoy tonight. 
okay? Feel free and get excited, okay, with pride. Again, enjoy yourself. You're here, you're now, you're with us, you're among the cool cats. So it's okay to relax. And um, yeah, a couple other things. A um, little housekeeping. Those receiving uh, awards, please approach the stage on your right. And then when you exit, and when you're all done, you can exit on the left. And then um, you can say a few words, the awardees, you can say a few words when you come through. So with that said, relax, enjoy. Now let's get this presentation started. Tonight is our opportunity to share how the Arts Council supports, promotes, and develops access to the arts for everyone. The Arts Council's mission is achieved by intentional efforts in four areas, service, dedication, collaboration, and impact. This past fall, downtown Rockford was a victim of vandalism. Obviously, all the windows being broken in uh, walking proximity just looked very terrible. All the business owners were very upset. The Rockford Area Art Council, the RACVB, and the River District came together with a plan to not only board up those windows, but to hire local artists to paint whatever they wanted on them. Through collaboration, we were able to turn a negative into a positive and cover up those windows temporarily until they were fully restored. What an amazing opportunity to see our community and our leaders come together and devise a plan that was not only quick but also very helpful, very encouraging, very inspiring and obviously supported our local arts community and our downtown community. Through collaborations like this we can continue to tackle major problems. When there is a need in the community, a need for creative thinking and doing, the Arts Council answers with sensitivity and innovation. Broken windows can open doors, and with the leadership of the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the support of the River District and the Arts Council, the commissioned mini murals bought our local businesses a little time and added beauty to an otherwise challenging moment. Proceeds from the auctioned off mini murals will benefit our local branch of NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Smash Art, the program that Vic was just talking about, is just one example of artists providing a creative service to address a community need. The following award categories exemplify what it means to serve our community through the arts. Young Arts Ambassador. Youth, which with their natural affinity for helping others, are dramatically impacted by their involvement in the arts. Communities with a healthy arts and culture community host youth who experience a 5.4 reduction in juvenile crime. Youth involved in the arts are five times less likely to drop out, two times as likely to go to college and graduate, and 78% more likely to vote. Here, here. The Young Arts Ambassador Award is given to an individual recognized as having made a significant contribution to the Rockford community through the arts. This year's young artists have so much to say in their work, and both are more than willing to dive into the source emotions and experience of living com complicated, layered, and youthful lives. Both artists are incredibly talented, and there is a clear intention with their creative choices, a telltale sign of talent yet to come. Young Arts Ambassador nominees, Dyson Dice White. Ziana Olson. This year's awardee, their work touched a diverse audience with its vibrant colors and evident raw emotions. The awardee is already creating a body of work with unifying threads, clear homage to artistic genius, and compelling biographical references. All at an age where just growing up can take all of our time and effort. The 2024 Young Arts Ambassador is Dyson Dice White.
going. Hi, everybody. <laughs> First, I would like to thank all of those who are tonight honoring the artists of our community. Thanks to Marriott McNamara and Vic Rivera and the Rockford Arts Council. Rockford is a city I call my home and I'll always be connected here. At this time, I want to acknowledge a list of individuals that believed in me and provided guidance toward my current success as an artist. I am very grateful to all of them and I will read their names to you. Kyle Wolf and Brian Hurston, two phenomenal art teachers at Roosevelt High School. My managers, Nathan Lyons and his mother, Michelle uh, Lyons and Bernie Echeverria. Um, <laughs> Bill Rose, uh, Doc and Jerry Corbin. <laughs> Carpenter's Place and Staff, Kathy Bridges, a friend and a mentor, Luann Wittegren, my devoted godmother who has provided so much love and guidance, and my beautiful girlfriend, Aquasia Angren. So, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, our next category, um, Arts Educator of the Year. All right, this award is to um, a Rockford area educator who has demonstrated exceptionalism in education, either through a career of leadership and mentorship or through a specific student-led project. Arts Educator of the Year nominees are Missy Minardi and Gretchen Stark. <laughs> New Genre, Art Space, Iga Palukpahuski and Jason Judd, pardon me. <laughs> um, Kyle Wolf, yes. Uh, Laura Gomel. <laughs> Lisa Jimenez, yes. Uh, Rachel Hanlon. And Stuart Johnson. <laughs> this year's educators are attuned to the challenging times our youth have experienced over the past four years. The arts educators are responding with dynamic projects, community-minded themes, and multi-layer ass assessments that ask kids to look inside and outside themselves for creative inspiration and impact. The awards, awardee's mission is to ensure that students not only encounter new media, but also acquire skills necessary for college and entrepreneurship. Simultaneously, they aim to create inclusive and innovative learning experiences that empower students the diverse back, from diverse backgrounds. This dynamic duo experiences a different school's organization, involvement in community impact projects, and dedication to contemporary arts contribute to their broad and innovative perspective of art education. The 2024 Arts Educator of the Year is the new genre art space, Aga Pahulska and Jason Judd. <laughs> Hello. Oh, wow, it's loud up here. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to the Arts Council. Uh, we weren't ready. We thought that you guys just emailed the 
the award winners today, was, this morning. So I was we were arguing, just here having fun. I was arguing with many people today, saying that, you know, no, we got nominated but didn't get any email notifications. We didn't get an email. So no, we're good. We're, we're going to drink. So we did. <laughs> So we're sorry. Um, <clears throat> but honestly, uh, Iggy and I are married. Uh, New John's Art Space started out as a, as a big idea and kind of like uh, culminated as an education duo between two people who just talk about how to teach new media. And we want to thank uh, the city of Rockford for some amazing grants and all the students who just like come out of the woodwork with amazing skills that you just never knew, and they never knew either, right? It's amazing. All right, say something. <laughs> something. All right. Thank you, guys. Are we going this way? All right, thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well done. Oh, my God. Surprise. <laughs> they really are, they're shocked. Um, Excellence in service to the arts. Excellence in service to the arts for an individual and organization describes those who play a vital role in the creative community. This award recognizes people and organizations that play the supporting actor role. Our creative community is elevated, enhanced, and exposed to new audiences because of their contributions. Excellence in service to the arts for an individual. Nominees include Beth Wemmer, Rockford Art Guild. Bob Blosser, Benny's Cleaners and Gallery. Bob Schleyhuber, Declarations of Interdependence. Jennifer Kuroda, Audubon Mural Project. Laura Eekman, Music Academy in Rockford. Lucas Segovia, Rockford Dance Company's Nutcracker. <laughs> Serene Al Sharif, Tadmore Tailoring Sustainability Efforts. <laughs> Steve Vertle, with his work in Stars of Light. <laughs> Stuart Johnson, Rock and Roll Institute Leadership and Instruction. <laughs> Vanessa Hida, Rockford Dance Company and Yash Musabji for multiple projects focused on cultural enrichment. This year's awardee collaborated with a local musician and a national organization to expand awareness and inspire social change. The awardee often aligns their projects with the arts to reach a larger audience with a conservation message. The awardee states, climate change is one of the most critical challenges facing our world and the artistic movement to confront climate change has steadily gained momentum. Tonight's awardee would like to continue that momentum through their important work in our community. The 2024 Excellence in Service to the Arts Award for an individual goes to Jennifer Kuroda for the Audubon Mural Project. gosh, thank you so much. I'm a little emotional. <laughs> um, I was not expecting this at all. Um, I do this for the love of conservation and the, the love of art. <laughs> and when the two come together, it's such a 
beautiful message to our community, and um, I certainly hope to see more bird murals in the future. <laughs> Where were we? Excellence in service to the arts for a group. All right, this recognizes a business, an agency, or organization that has made a significant contribution in support of the arts in the Rockford area. All nominees in this category are an example to, our, to others in our community. How to contribute to place space making, how to support creative projects, how to provide excellent instructions, how to employ artists, in essence, how to uplift our community, our creative community. Nominees for the excellence and service to the Arts for a group include 317 Art Collaborative, <laughs> Domingo's in El Parque, <laughs> Mays Books, Rock and Roll Institute, <laughs> um, Rockford Dance Company, <laughs> The Music Academy, <laughs> and Whisper Studios. Okay. A local writer submitted about this um, year's awardee that the impact of the awardee on the literary renaissance in this city is absolutely undeniable. They have essentially resurrected a literary, literary community within two years of being in operation. Wow. Most events at their store are so busy you can't even get inside. It's astoundingly impactful. This year's awardee elevates a vibrant, thriving literary community from writers to readers. The 2024 Excellence in Service to the Arts for an organization is May's Books, Dave and Kim Patterson. <laughs> Come on. There, I mean, there's so many people to thank. Uh, this is a wonderful community to have a bookstore. Um, yeah, Kim. <laughs> All right, so I have watched this guy work every single day for the last two years to build a space for literature, a space for people to share their ideas and to listen to each other's ideas. And when I say every single day, I mean every single day. We were just on vacation and uh, we spent a lot of time in bookstores <laughs> where he was making connections and he was planning more events for Rockford. So it is no exaggeration when I say that May's Books is Dave. And I'm very proud of him. Uh, working at the bookstore for as long as I have, just seeing the evolution of it, it's been very inspiring to see how receptive the community has been to uh, Dave and Kim's literary efforts to bring it more in the forefront, and it's just very beautiful to see, and it's very inspiring to me. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate this. Seriously. That is so fun. Local bookstores, baby. Dedication. While well, these guys are getting set up, artists and our expertise is born from hours of practice, rinse, and repeat. The Arts Council supports its partners' dedication to their craft by providing funding opportunities, legislative advocacy, and organizational resources. 
Tonight, we have the pleasure of hearing our dedicated 2023 Performing Artist of the Year, Mickey Torpedo. And uh, before we do, I want to just share um, a little bit of Mickey's gush fest, if you will, from the Instagram, from the gram. Art is nourishment for the soul. It's nature and nurture. Art is experimentation and invention. It's trauma processing. It's the subconscious and the conscious working together to make sense of the world around us. It's the greatest accomplishments of humankind, and it's a mirror that reflects our biggest failures. It's the glue that holds together a thriving uh, civilization, yet is also a unique fin fingerprint of a community at a particular moment in time. Art is a celebration of being alive.
Thank you. Thanks, Ted. Okay. Visual Artist of the Year Award recognizes an individual who demonstrated significant achievement in or contribution to the arts in the Rockford area through visual art. This year's nominees are standouts in their craft, innovative in their approach, and dedicated to their vision. This year's artists are highly motivated, highly engaged, and highly accomplished in their field of visual art. Nominees for Visual Artist of the Year include 360 Grace Woodworks. <laughs> Brian Douglas. Chris Jebus Sweeney. Drew Urich. Dustin Eckhart. Judith Gowdy. Laura Gomel. <laughs> Margaret McGraw. <laughs> Molly Carter. <laughs> Nancy King Mertz. <laughs> and Rose Salinas. <laughs> this year's awardee is someone who has been recognized for their contributions as an amazing instructor and not yet for their contribution to raising the visual arts bar in our region. Their training, combined with their deeply personal aesthetic, moves the viewer. Voluminous colors, stitched canvases, and meticulous studies of shape and form combine to create a visual delight, fresh lines, and a unique reflection on femininity. The 2024 Visual Artist of the Year is Molly Karcher. <laughs> Molly is a teacher, so she's running like, like she has to. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Thank you. I became an artist, so I didn't have to do this. <laughs> I wanted to just hide in my studio and listen to music. This is amazing. Um, gosh, thank you, Arts Council. Thank you, Mary and Kayla and Toby and everyone at the Arts Council and um, the Board of Directors. Thank you to artist friends that are here to support me and, and the art community. Uh, this is a shock. I did not expect this. So many great nominees for this category and others. Uh, thank you to my husband, Dave Menard, who we've been together for a really, really long time. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, and we understand each other, and he always encourages me and pushes me to you know, keep going in the arts. Uh, thank you to uh, Veronica Martinez, who nominated me for this award. Thank you, Veronica. She's always a big supporter of my paintings. Um, to my boys who give me sometimes the time and space to make my work. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, so it's uh, always a challenge. You know, when you have kids, it changes your whole perspective. But I've stuck with it, and uh, thank you to my students. One of them is here tonight, Ben. Uh, they always inspire me and keep me, you know, in the arts and talking about art, making art, experimenting. Uh, let's see. I did have a thing here, but I forgot to open it because I'm nervous. Um, <laughs> I will open it because I think there was something else. Oh, my, uh, my family, my parents, uh, my grandparents, they're not here, but uh, 
They really were instrumental in guiding me. I grew up in a family of artists and musicians and designers in Vermont and New Mexico. Um, and they really laid the groundwork for me that art is central to our lives. Um, so I thank them from the bottom of my heart. Uh, my sister, who grew up with me, and we were basically grew up as artists together. So uh, that's, that's really important to me. And our love of nature, too. So thank you so much. Thank you for the award. Run, Molly, run. <laughs> okay. On to the Performing Arts um, Artist of the Year. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right. This award um, recognizes an individual performing artist or ensemble, music, dance, choreography, actor, and so on, um, who demonstrated significant achievements in or contribution to the performing arts in the Rockford area. The nominees for Performing Artists of the Year are Caitlin Baylor and Megan Baylor, all will come again. Joel Zavala. <laughs> Lucas um, Segovia, Rockford Dance Company's Nutcracker. Nuni Sharp. Okay. Um, the Cringe. and Toby Thomas. This year's awardee states that their goal is for their audience to always find something relatable and true in their performances. They believe that there is something utterly human and resonance in their pared down body, dance and body, and their goal as artists is to use that tool, the body, to make meaning for themselves and others. This year's awardee take us on a deeply personal journey from the shock of their personal world turned upside down into true anguish and ultimately towards healing. The 2024 Performing Artists of the Year are Caitlin Baylor and Megan Baylor. Ika told us when we were drinking out in the lobby that you would have received an email if you won. <laughs> so we kind of let our guards down a little bit. <laughs> um, we were just talking about a dance professor we had in college who would always say to her group of dancers about um, seemingly unrelated things, what do we know about XYZ because we dance? And we would, you know, participate in the philosophical exercise, but we, I think as students found it kind of silly and, and would kind of get a laugh about it. Um, and then when I was 22, um, we graduated from college and I moved to New Orleans and Megan moved back to Rockford. And um, one of the first things that happened um, when I got settled in, in New Orleans was the first hurricane um, to hit New Orleans since Katrina was forecast um, to go there, Hurricane Isaac. And it came and went pretty uneventfully. And a couple weeks after the hurricane passed, I received a postcard in the mail. Um, and it just had these like black pen scribbling drawings of a hurricane. Um, from Megan, and all it said on it was, what do we know about hurricanes because we dance? <laughs> um, and I think a lot of people in the audience would agree that there is a way of knowing the world that is specific um, to seeing it through our art. Um, and I know Megan and I, as young artists in our 20s, really appreciated the extent to which um, dance and choreography enriched our lives. Um, and then in 2023, following our incredibly difficult um, journey through Megan's bone marrow transplant, we found that dance and choreography became the thing that returned us to life. Um, and so All Will Come Again, um, which is the work 
for which we were nominated um, is both the story and the product of that return to life. Thank you so much. Um, we feel incredibly supported by this community in our artistic efforts, and that means so much to us. With All Will Come Again, we wanted to give a specific shout out to the Rockford Art Museum and Rockford Dance Company for opening their spaces for the creation and then the performance of this piece last spring. Thank you so much. Um, we also want to give a shout out that we are going to represent an extended full-length version of All Will Come Again on May 11th on this very stage. And uh, that is thanks in part to a grant from the Rockford Area Arts Council. So thank you so much for that as well. And um, we feel so excited about how the expanded All Will Come Again has come together and we would love so much to share it with as many of you as possible. So um, if you would come, it would mean so much to us. Um, so I guess just to wrap up, um, I'll say that, um, you know, after receiving this award for All Will Come Again at this particular time in our lives is exceptionally meaningful and it really affirms that art is the creative pulse of survival. So thank you. Production of the year. Production of the year is awarded to an individual, business, or organization that produced the best local theater, film, media, or live production in the Rockford area. An excellent production creates an unforgettable experience, and this year's productions are no exception. Nominees include Artists Ensemble Theater Jumping to Delusions. Rebecca and Justin Francis for the SOAR Awards. <laughs> Leslie Crow at Nicholas Conservatory for Cultivating Culture. <laughs> Nielsen Corral's Carmina Barana by Carl Orff. <laughs> Rockford Dance Company, Sleeping Beauty. and Yash Musabji for Prelude to L1 F3. The national draw of talented artists and the level of actual production in combination with the showcasing of the black community's affinity for and foundational ownership of inspirational and gospel music makes this year's awardee an exceptional choice. The 2024 production of the year is SOAR Awards. Rebecca and Justin Francis. While they come up, I was on a call with arts leaders. I was on a call with arts leaders and they said, we were talking about nominees for this, and they said, any town where you have a gospel and inspirational music production happening is award deserving. I'll make this brief. I'm a, I'm a pastor, so you know they talk along, so I'll make it brief. Uh, thank you. Thank you to the Arts Council. Um, thank you for everybody that have supported us uh, in Rockford. So often, Rockford doesn't always have the best rap. Um, but one thing that I love about Rockford and even about this production is it's homegrown. And I don't care what anybody says, it's a lot of talent in this city. So, so once again, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, because one thing that I learned in life is no one has to support you. You know, no one has to appreciate you. So I don't take it lightly, nor do I take it um, for granted when people show up 
they give their support, and uh, it encourages us to continue to do what we do. So once again, I want to thank the Arts Council. I could not do any of this without my wife that has worked alongside with me. I'm grateful for good parents that have believed in me, and I just want to encourage someone uh, that may have a dream or they may have a passion. Uh, in the words of Pastor Mike Todd, it's only crazy until it happens, so don't stop dreaming. I don't have much more to say. Um, the only thing that I'm super proud of the SOAR Awards for is outside of the fact that we produce a live national production now for television, we also get to utilize the very people in this city to produce that a lot heavily. Our volunteers, over 150 people are volunteers and they get to use their artistic skills, their artists, like we have makeup artists and all those people are now being called nationally by celebrities to do this work and they're coming right out of our city. So that's just something that we're, we're really proud of and it just showcases that the arts are extremely important and the skill sets that happen in this city, these people are now going national, so thank you. All right, literary excellence. The liter literary excellence is awarded to a Rockford area's individual or agency who has demonstrated exceptionalism in the literary arts through author authorship, authorship, performance, and or contribution to the overall literary community in 2023. Liter literary excellence nominees include David and Kim Pedersen, Mays Books. <laughs> Emily Scipiora, Arthur. And Kimberla Lawson Roby, author. A review panelist stated, this year's awardee has literally put Rockford on the map when it comes to their genre of writing. This, the awardee is a national renowned writer who makes a real impact on lives through her writing, which focuses on black love and joy. We are really lucky to have her as a Rockfordian. She, and she's deserving recognition for her achievements. The awardee's outstandingly successful writing career happened in large part through her belief in herself. She started her own publishing company and finding her writer's voice with the, her audience has built an international following for her work. The 2024 Literary Excellence Award goes to Kimberla Lawson Roby. Um, thank you so, so much, Mary and Lynn, um, the RAAC, the entire board. Um, as you can likely imagine, when you have been writing for 29 years and you have traveled around the country and, uh, you know, not to mention the, the number of readers that I hear from online outside of the country that I have received awards nationally and in other cities. But believe me when I tell you that to receive this award here in my hometown, oh my God. truly means everything. So thank you just to the community of Rockford. I will never forget when I started out writing um, in 1995 and I was employed with the city of Rockford. I worked for community development so I would work every uh, evening from 6 to 10 at night and on weekends and I did that for seven months until the book was complete. And then it didn't hurt that I worked for the city of Rockford because Mayor Box um, was very instrumental in a 
attending that reception. And Doug Scott, who used to be the legal director, had become one of our state assemblymen. And so, of course, that got the Register Star on board. And they were kind enough to do um, this wonderful article. And so that's how people knew about the event in the TV stations. And so my foundation is here. Um, I am a product of District 205 and um, Auburn's Academy. Um, my foundation began with college um, when I went to Rock Valley College, and so I am Rockford, you know. Every part of Rockford is who I am. So thank you all so much, and congratulations to all of the nominees and the winners who are being um, acknowledged and honored tonight. It truly is a blessing. Thank you so very much. A collaboration. We are better together. When artists work together with an idea, with a theme, with a vision, the circles of impact expand. When different ages collaborate, the circles expand. When different races collaborate, the circles expand. When different life experiences intersect, it can become a shared experience and our perspective has to change. Shared experiences are where it's at. Please welcome collaborative literary artists in City of Rockford, Poets Laureate Jenna Goldsmith and Trinity Rucker. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jenna Goldsmith, and I have the honor of uh, serving as Rockford's uh, second City of Rockford Poet Laureate. Um, thank you. This is Trinity Rucker. Uh, she is our newly installed. <laughs> our newly installed uh, Youth Poet Laureate. Um, in the spirit of collaboration, Trinity and I are going to read a poem that I wrote for uh, the Rockford Symphony's 90th year. Um, and this poem is truly collaborative. We're not just reading it together, but um, many people in the community um, helped me write this. About 80 or so answered my call to, to help write this poem. So it really is a collaborative effort. The poem is called Undeniable Sound, a love letter from your listeners. Um, and it is for the Rockford Symphony Orchestra at 90 years. Listen. Listen. From Main Street. From Adams, Addison, Alder. From Beach, Bell School, Brighton, Broadmoor, Broadway. Cedar, East State. South Main, West Jefferson. Central and Charles and Chateau. Perryville, Alpine. From us, from us. I-90. 20, no, not that 20, <laughs> that 20. On ramps and off ramps, that overpass, Montague exit. From us. Court, Stony Creek, Sage, North, Darlene, Dave, David, Deborah, Deb Ellen, entire family trees as streets and avenues. And did you know there is a delightful drive in our city? <laughs> From us, row P, seat 14, row LL, seat six, Row RR, seat nine. Row seven, seat one. Box one, pit. You are evolving. Enduring, evoking, enriching. You are emotional. Exuberant, experienced excellence. Gift. Impressive, soaring, 
soothing, sacred. An inspiration. You are employment. You are civilized. You are underappreciated. You are the pit, caramel, Gustav, Julie in all caps and an exclamation point, grandparents. You are resounding cello, instrumental clarity, timeless insight, intelligible talent, fulfilling nourishment. You are home. You are rest. You are words I have to look up. Euphonious, mellifluous. You are 90. And we are here and out there. Still in love with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. Congratulations to all of the, uh, the nominees and the winners, of course. As someone who once didn't see it, I want to help others discover the greatness that is lying doormat inside of them. There is power in our words, our actions, our thoughts, and our God. I want to help people realize that God planted us on this earth for a reason, that we have a bright future in front of us. Though there may be rough times, we should keep our head up because we are the future. Thank you. <laughs> Jenna originally read that poem at the 90th anniversary of the symphony. And I was backstage with a somewhat crusty older gentleman who was helping us. Um, and he just had a little bit of an edge. And I kept trying to you know, soften the edge, and it just it wasn't happening. And Jenna read her poem. He's been backstage for 38 years, I believe. Jenna read her poem, and he is weeping. And it was just so, it was so sweet, and then he turned around and hugged us both, and I was like, yes, <laughs> this, is, this is the arts. Um, so, so happy with that. So I just wanted to share a little bit about Jenna's power. Thank you, Trinity, too. <laughs> Innovation in the arts is awarded to an individual, business, or organization whose work in the Rockford area pushed the traditional boundaries of the art market by using new or emergent media, a new perspective on an old theme, or avant-garde digital integration. Innovation can look like wildly and expertly carved fruits and vegetables. Start <laughs> Starting a band on Monday and playing a show on Friday, what? A fresh take on an age-old story. A look into the keyhole of the broad and diverse black experience. A 3D ultraviolet immersive art experience. The 2024 Innovation in the Arts nominees include Lincoln Bias. Rock and Roll Institute. Rockford Dance Company's Sleeping Beauty. Saya Ryan's Black Magic Show at 317 Art Collaborative. Jenny Matthews and Zach Stevens' Vivid Darkness. By fostering collaborative opportunities and encouraging participation from diverse backgrounds, this year's awardee plays a pivotal role in uniting artists, enthusiasts, and supporters. This sense of community goes beyond the traditional boundaries of the art market, creating a dynamic ecosystem that benefits the whole community. This year's awardee is a catalyst for change in the Rockford art market, challenging educational norms, fostering creativity across multiple disciplines, focusing on intergenerational learning, 
and building a strong and interconnected artistic community. This year's awardee has impacted countless youths, providing a space and place to find their voice and their people, explore their gifts, and become a star. The 2024 Innovation in the Arts Award goes to the Rock and Roll Institute. <laughs> Thank, but so many people I want to leave out there for being such jerks. No, just kidding. <laughs> I knew there wasn't going to be an email, so I, I wrote a whole whole spiel. Um, so we we brought quite a posse, but that is not everyone. If you are part of our board or our staff, can you stand up for a second, please? There's a lot more of us back there. Thank you, thank you. Um, in accepting this award, we extend our heartfelt thanks to the Rockford community for embracing our vision. Um, starting a band on Monday and playing a show on a Friday, kind of like the movie School of Rock, is not as easy as you'd think it is to do. Um, I'd like to uh, take a moment to thank our wonderful staff, <laughs> many of who have been um, teaching at Rock and Roll Institute for 20 years, um, and who like, or some who, like me, have attended the camp since its inception. I would like to thank our beautiful board members who work tirelessly to keep us running and roll with our crazy ideas, most recently 20 scholarships for our 20th year. If you would like to help with that, see me after. Um, we would like to thank our sponsors, particularly the Community Foundation of Northern Illinois, Lux Productions, 100 Women Who Care, Keith School, and of course, the Rockford Area Arts Council. Um, they are providing over six of our scholarships this summer. And above all, I would like to thank the children who come into our care for being the bravest, most hardworking and creative people that I have ever had the pleasure of knowing. And as we look to the future, let us remember that innovation knows no bounds and let us continue to push the envelope, defy expectations and strive for greatness and kindness in all that we do. Thank you. I just want to say, challenging educational norms. Thank you for that one. I'm going to put that one on my resume and my profiles and all that stuff. Thank you so much, everybody. We've, we've been doing this for a long time because we have always felt like the, the joy and, and the inspiration that we've gotten from the arts community as well as the music community, every creative people, every creative group in Rockford has been something that we could never repay. And we're trying really hard to repay that every year, every day with Rock and Roll Institute. And we're gonna keep doing it more and more and more as time goes along. Thank you so much for the support. We absolutely love being here. We are honored. Thank you so much, everybody. We love you. Woo! Ah, <laughs> Lordy. Um... Thank you very, very much. Uh, uh, I have to thank Jessica, my husband, Anthony, Hilly. I have to thank Kevin, all of the board members, Mary, Lynn, thank you guys. Um, I want to thank our kids, our students. I think what is sometimes forgotten is the kids that we teach are the marginalized children, they're the trans students, they're the queer kids, they're the kids that aren't athletes, they're the kids that don't fit in and we give them a home and a sense of community. And they're a lot like us and they like to refer to themselves as weird little losers. And as I look out at you middle-aged, old little losers, <laughs> I just wanna say, all of you people make me extremely proud to be from fucking Rockford. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well done. Well done. All right, you're on. All right. Couple more. Couple more. All right. <laughs> Place making and space making. This award recognizes an individual, business, organization, public installation, or event that enhance life for Rockford area residents through art. Place making and space making nominees include 
317 Art Collaborative. <laughs> Domingos El Parque, yes. <laughs> Sons in the Park. Um, Art Publica, Artist Salon. Mm -hmm. Jenny Matthews and Zach Stevens for Near Your Near Party. Leslie Crow and Nicholas Conservatory, Cultivating Culture. This year's awardees represent the tone setters for those who live in Rockford region and for those who are just passing through. The creative community is expanding and we're elevating the experiences of our neighbors and honoring those contributors to what makes this Rockford region the gritty soul filled place that it is. This year's awardee has been expanding the creative community for years, two decades in fact. This awardee transfers, transforms a space to host the largest free Latino concert series in Northern Illinois. The series provides cultural entertainment for all ages and offers families a venue to experience Latino heritage through music and dance in an air open park setting at the district's, Park District's Lovings Lake. If you never experienced it, this summer is the summer. The 2024 Space Making and, and Place Making Award goes to Domingos El Parque. Buenas noches a todos. Good evening, good evening. Wow. Um, I too did not get the email if I was going to win. Start with that. Um, uh, man, I don't know. Uh, one, uh, it's an honor and actually just being recognized for what we're doing in the community uh, with Domingos en el Parque. It's been 20, now we're going on to 22 years. Uh, been honored to be uh, one of the coordinators the last 10 years. Um, but before I start thanking many people, this is part of my, this is just a, not even a quarter of the team that's helped me over the years. My wife, my daughters. I got other volunteers that are here, um, but as the years have gone on, um, I, 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 along with my good friend Delia, co-founder of United at Peace, originally started just doing just Sunday events at uh, Club Patriotico Mexicano at the CPM because we felt our community needed entertainment, more places that our families can go for free and enjoy a good time. And then, lo and behold, a good friend of mine that I've been knowing for years uh, as a youth came about you know, one day to one of the events and said, Antonio, Delia, what about if you guys take over the, the Domingos en el Parque? I was so shocked and just, it was a great feeling because to, to us in the community, Armando Cardenas, can you please give him a hand? <laughs> Although not officially through church or anything like that, he's been like a padrino to us, like a godfather. He has watched over us in many ways. He has, he has planted the seed to many things in our community. Being Domingos in El Parco, one of the things that I know when he came to us, I said, we gotta keep the legacy going. We gotta keep growing. We gotta keep providing the cultures of our Latino ancestors and beyond because it's not just Mexicanos that live in Rockford. We have a, var a variety of Latinos coming through. And so now we're, be able, we're able to provide a location for our communities, not only to enjoy and have fun and celebrate con musica, but also to bring our community together. Nuestros vecinos, nuestros barrios, coming together, that's our goal, is to come and celebrate with us, come and learn our culture, come and dance, come and have a little food, and come and just, you know, just have fun and unite because through the arts, 
This is awesome that you guys do this. This is our first time even, you know, being nominated for something like this. So thank you, Rockford Area Arts Council. Thank you to a lot of our supporters out there. Um, I, I grab ideas from everybody. It's not a one-person thing. Um, I have my homegirl, Melissa Moy, out there that have helped us bring new ideas, innovation, beauty art, live art. I want young people in our community to see that there's options out there. Because growing up in Rockford for me was tough. And I want young people to know people are here that care. And like somebody said earlier, I fucking love Rockford. <laughs> Get un chingo. Muchas gracias. Armando, si se puede, ¿verdad? Ajú, vámonos. Hell yeah, I love swearing. This is the best. Ah. I come from a long line of swearers, so that's... Uh, just makes me feel at home. <laughs> Impact. Art connects communities. We know that, and we want everyone to know that, and that's our job at the Arts Council. We approached the last two awards, and as we do, I want to share the Arts Council's impact, our 2023 highlight reel, if you will. First, so you can ooh and ah and say, how did they do that? Second, so you will consider an ongoing gift to the Arts Council. In 2023, we nearly completed the Rockford Region Cultural Plan with plans this summer for an unveiling. It's a guide for how our community can elevate and celebrate our rich diversity and our creative community. We secured $400,000 in Illinois DCEO grants for the arts and culture community in Winnebago County. All year long, we have been establishing new strategic partnerships with the Ice Hogs, with UW Health, with Northwest Bank, and Hard Rock. Those are kind of big players. We developed a new website and brand for the Arts Council. We installed seven major public art projects in the city's most at-risk neighborhoods and in every ward. 55 utility box wraps, a mural in down mid, I'm sorry, excuse me, a mural in Midtown. Nature Fusion Garden at Haskell and Fisher, and Fisher. Telephone Pole Trail from Haskell Elementary to Fairgrounds Boys and Girls Club. Over 15 mosaics on 7th and Morgan Streets. And the Colossal Kids Mosaic at RMTD's Downtown Transfer Station. We provided year-round arts enrichment at Washington Park Community Center. We installed the 2023 and 2024 City of Rockford Poet Laureate and Youth Poet. We subgranted nearly $60,000. And as a result of all this work, of all this creative and culturally significant work, we were recognized by the Illinois Arts Council as a destination for an active, diverse, and interconnected arts council. Because of this recognition, we hosted the Illinois Arts Council, board president Nora Daly, and the Illinois Arts Council's executive staff. It was an exciting time. Um, I'm actually getting a little tired, you know, thinking about it all over again. Um, that was a lot, Lynn. <laughs> you go right ahead. Can I go right ahead? Yeah, you okay. go right ahead now. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> that was a lot. All right. Earlier I said everybody could get up and uh, go get a refill and everything, but uh, right now I need everybody's attention. Um, okay. As a vice president of the Rockford Arts Council, okay, I'm honored to be here tonight. And um, the Arts Council believes in transformative power of art, okay? And we are dedicated to making it accessible to all, all right? A mission statement like that comes with a lot of dollar signs, you guys, okay? That's why I am turning to you, our community, for some support, all right? When you invest in the arts, the council, you are investing in the hearts and the souls of our community. All right, you are investing in expressions, creativity, and in our future, as Mickey pointed out, okay? The Arts Council is experiencing a resurgence, okay? The Arts Council is everywhere, you guys, all right? We are a part of a lot of important conversations. 
like public arts, cultural festivities, public infrastructures, commercial development, neighborhood planning, okay? Talking about us all over. You are giving a platform to emergent artists, providing opportunity for our youth, which is huge, and enriching our culture, our fabric of our community. Your support, they're having a ball out there. I think it's the rock and roll institute. They need That's to come in here. <laughs> I have a guess who it is, I do. Your support is critical right now. So Mary and her team can continue to do wow projects like this. So whenever you give, whatever you give, if it's $10, if it's $10,000, um, every contribution, it matters. So now, it's the time to give, okay? What's it gonna take in 2024, all right? So, every contribution makes a difference. It takes 12 $500 donations that will fund action grants. 12 $500, okay, donations. It will take 60 $1,000 donations will fund youth summer arts programs. It will take $2,500 donations, just one, okay? We'll fund one access grant. And then it will take eight $10,000 donations. We'll fund our four public art installations. That's huge, you guys. But we need our community. We need everybody. And together, we can make our community more beautiful. Together, we can make sure that all voices continue to be heard. And together, we connect our community with the arts. All right, so please, tonight, today, this evening, give, okay? And we, Mary and the team, the board of directors, we thank you in advance, okay? We know what it's gonna take. We're asking each and every one of you but we thank you in advance. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. Thank Thanks, you, Mary. Thanks. Okay. We're here. That was the big ask. That was the big ask. We're here with the final two awards. The award for the Distinguished Artist of the Year is given to an individual recognized as distinguished in their discipline, having made a significant contribution to the creative community through the arts over their career. Distinguished Artist is an honorary position for one year during which the individual will serve as an arts ambassador for the Rockford region. Nominees include Brian Douglas, Chris Jeebus Sweeney, Drew Urich, Joel Zavala, Laura Gomel, Lincoln Bias, Manny Tang, Nancy King Mertz, Norm Knott, Paul Sletton, and Steve Pitkin. The awardee's work is celebrated internationally with an impressive draw from diverse audiences, both artists and collectors. The awardee's ability to paint landscapes, portraits, and everything in between is unparalleled. And this awardee is a life-changing teacher as well with a national following and a local classroom. A presence like theirs in our visual arts community creates a new level of talent and expectation. The awardee's command of their craft is clearly demonstrated. The pastels read her thoughts and obey her fingers, the light, the weight, and the moments. So accomplished is she. The awardee has asked, was asked to host classes at Claude Monet's garden in Giverny, France. And she also had a solo show there as a culminating moment for her mastership. Please join me in honoring the 2024 Distinguished Artist of the Year, Nancy King Mertz.
Well, you know they keep us all in suspense, but ever hopeful, I just prepared a few little <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is such an honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And congratulations to all the nominees. It's a huge slate of very accomplished people. So I can't believe I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Three, almost three years ago, my husband and I decided we needed to move to Rockford to open this learning center that's been a lifelong dream. And Rockford is the perfect spot. It's embraced us so well, and we're so happy to be here. And we're grateful to the Arts Academy, or, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> For oh, whatever, and I'm <laughs> I'm so grateful to my husband Ron because I've had this dream for a while, and he just jumped right in with me, and we made a big move, and here we are. And thank you. The Lifetime Achievement Award is given by the Rockford Area Arts Council with advisement from the creative community. Composed of various Rockford artists and representatives from arts and culture organizations. Tonight, we celebrate the distinguished career and creative genius that is Jeff Hendry. Jeff recently retired from Rockford University after 41 years in the classroom. During his time there, Hendry wore many hats due to his diverse skill sets. He directed shows and taught theater history and Shakespeare classes. He's referred to by colleagues as a Renaissance man. According to Jeff, Rockford University provided him opportunities he hadn't dreamed of. In addition to teaching, costume designing, and directing, he had an extensive freelancing career, providing him opportunities in theaters across the United States and over oceans in England and in Japan. For those future Rockford University students, and the next generation of costume designers who will not get to experience Jeff Hendry. He has one piece of advice. Don't be afraid to take a risk. Hello, Jeff. Thank you for being such an exciting collaborator and a dynamic colleague. You are a true Renaissance man of the theater. Let me say thank you for the giving of your time and your life and your energy to building and elevating the quality of Rockford University Performing Arts. Working under Jeff Henry was a formative experience in my life and I'm sure the lives of countless others. I remember an entire classroom of students working an entire semester to make one incredible latch-hooked dog costume. I gotta say, we were pretty proud that after we were done using it, it went on rentals regionally. Jeff, you taught me early on the importance of communication and community. You taught me that the world is so huge and go out and learn something. And because of all those skills and all that advice, years ago I created a show where I interview songwriters, producers, and more about their careers. I've been able to travel the world with it. I've been able to have a show that has reached over 115 different countries worldwide. And that's because of everything that you taught me. One of my most vivid memories was when you and I team taught. When afterwards you came up to me and said, aren't you ever going to say anything? And I was like, oh gosh. To be honest, Jeff, I get so enraptured and caught up in the way you're lecturing that I forget. Yet I'm supposed to teach as well. You truly are one of the greatest lecturers I've ever heard, and sitting and listening to you is just a pleasure. My name is Risa, and I'm a musical theater graduate, class of 2010, and I've been very fortunate to have a relationship with Jeff Hendry that has morphed over the years. And my most notable memory is during opening night of my senior sem, feeling incredibly nervous, and Jeff looking at me and telling me to trust myself. And that's been a lesson I've been able to take in for the rest of my life as self-doubt is definitely strong and reminding myself to trust.
trust myself. I was his student from 2007 to 2011 as part of the musical theater program at Rockford College. It's very rare that professor is, is gonna reach out to you on Facebook or via text and just say, hey, how is everything? What are you working on? Tell me about it. And that goes a lot farther than you could ever imagine. I, and I have known Jeff for a very long time. I've loved him ever since I met him. He and I are both sort of old fashioned guys with a modern sensibility. Jeff is one of those designers that understands a budget. He doesn't oversell what he can deliver on that budget. If there are instances where it has to be changed, he's very forthcoming. He's a great example for young designers. He has always, always wanted whatever's in front of him to be the best it can possibly be. And he's always put himself second to make sure that everybody else's vision comes first. It's who he is. He wants everybody to feel as beautiful as the garments that he creates. Quite frankly, there's been times in my life where I've thought, I can't do this, but because Jeff thinks I can, I did. So Jeff, I understand that you have been nominated for an Oscar for a lifetime achievement. Well, Rockford's equivalent. It couldn't happen to a more deserving person. But the thing I remember the most, or at least the thing that stands out, is something that I enjoyed. But I just loved any opportunity I had to sit and watch you engage with the students. Your knowledge on so many subjects is astounding. How do you define artistic excellence, amazing talent, incredible creativity? Well, I can tell you in two words. Jeff Hendry. Jeff would take his amazing talent and bring his creations to life. This award is so richly deserved. Thank you, Jeff, for sharing your talent with all of us. Tonight, we want to share a sliver of the Jeff Hendry onstage experience with you. us on stage. to thank the Arts Council for this amazing honor. Uh, let me put this in context for you. I moved here in 1982. Ronald Reagan was still president. <laughs> there was no such thing as a laptop or a cell phone. So how did we get anything done? We talked. We communicated. A couple of the people that sent in things uh, one of them, Kirk Clark, I met when he was auditioning for our summer theater and he was 17 years old, living in Pecatonica, and he came over to be and a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Fast forward 35 years, he's an artistic director at a theater in Maine. He called me and asked me if I would come design costumes for him. It's a theater, the arts, is about connections. And I have been so blessed in my life to work with amazing people. Jane Poor and Chuck Hanus, who founded the Rockford Dance Company. <laughs> Philip Dedrick, who was instrumental in work with the art museum and the art department at the college. <laughs> Noel Rennerfeld and Angelo Odierno, who I worked with as both set and lighting designers at the university, Deborah Mogford. These people taught me how to be a good designer. The other thing that is really important that I need to say, and Patricia Ziprot, a famous costume designer, said this in her last Tony Awards speech. No one ever goes on stage wearing a costume sketch. 
It's because of the people that work behind the scenes that make me look good on stage, and that was my students. My students sewing in the costume shop, the costume shop foreman's working hours, hand beating, as one student said, latch hooking a dog costume so all the hair moved. I couldn't have done it without my students, and that's why I, I was here for, for um, 41 years. Rockford, someone I can't remember said Rockford has a bad rep. I would agree with that, but it's so wrong. There is so much to do here in the arts. I was stunned going back to when the clock tower was in existence and had its dinner theater there. There, you know, the dance company, the symphony. A lot of the arts have changed over the years, but they have remained solid and steadfast. And the community has supported the arts. The Arts Council has supported the arts. And I, it has been a wonderful place to live and make a career. The last person I really need to thank is my husband, John. And he <laughs> held down the fort for way many more nights than I can imagine when I was in rehearsal or in tech or taking students to a field trip somewhere. And you know, he made a lot of my, most of my career possible. So thank you, John. And again, <laughs> the talent that is here tonight is representative and shows how vital the arts are in Rockford. And I said, keep it going. Thank you. Service, dedication, collaboration, and impact are the pillars of the Arts Council's efforts. We can apply for all the grants in the world, request funding from our government agencies, and advocate for policies that support the arts. But the Arts Council needs you. Become a member of the Arts Council and connect with our community through the arts today. I want to thank you for attending the 2024 Rockford Area Arts Awards, and I want to thank our sponsors again. I want to thank all of our nominees. Let's give them one last round of applause. I also want to ask all nominees to find their way to where the band was playing. We will do a champagne toast at a different time than we thought we were going to do it, but we will do it right after this program. So please find your way to the place where the band used to be and where the DJ, DJ is. Now, it's time to move. Find your friends, make new ones, and enjoy the evening. This concludes the awards.